UFC 252 is coming up this Saturday, and of course it features as the main event Stipe vs. DC3, the trilogy fight. Of course this is a big fight because it's for the heavyweight belt, but more importantly than that, it frees up the heavyweight division. This division has been pretty stagnant for the past two and a half years, but this Saturday everything changes. I don't even care about determining who the greatest heavyweight of all time is. In fact, I don't even buy that narrative. I'm just super excited that these other contenders will finally get a chance at that belt. The heavyweight division is a hot mess of contenders right now that have just been beating each other up for nothing more than a ranking. MMA math can't even be applied here as all the top contenders have all lost to other top contenders. It's been a years long back and forth without that shiny five pound prize at the end of it. But it should be very entertaining to watch these beasts of men finally get the chance to go for that ultimate prize. Now I feel like the UFC knows this. They've scheduled many heavyweight fights coming up. There's two more on this card between uh, Jarzinho and Dos Santos and even newcomers Chris Dawkins and Parker Porter. So I feel like they're very aware of what's going on and they're going to deliver for us as, as fans. Now this video is about what's going to happen after Saturday night, but before we get into that, I have to ask myself, why is Steve Pay versus DC3 even happening? So it seems to me that DC has petitioned the UFC to make this fight, and the UFC likes him so much that they gave it to him. If you remember back when DC took Steve Pay's belt, Stipe, was, he had three title defenses under his belt and was going for the record fourth. Of course, he didn't get it. But as a three defense champion, a immediate rematch, it kind of makes sense. I understand that. But it wasn't an immediate rematch. It was for Stipe. But DC had another fight thrown in there against Derek Lewis, whom I felt was kind of hand-picked for him as a fight that, that DC is probably going to win most of the time. Again, I felt like the UFC was doing him a favor, helping him build that legacy. And now, after the second fight that Stipe won, DC wants an immediate rematch. Does a one defense champion really require an immediate rematch? It doesn't matter if he's going to retire or not. Does he really deserve a rematch after one title defense? Again, this feels like the UFC is doing the man favors. And their rise to the top kind of echoes that as well. Stipe had to fight 10 heavyweight fights before he got a shot at the belt. And DC only had two heavyweight fights before he got a shot at the belt. And I know that they have very different careers in the sense that Stipe came into the UFC after, I think, six professional fights. He spent most of his professional career here. And DC had a lengthy career in other organizations and even held belts in many respectable organizations. And, of course... He had those two heavyweight fights, moved down to light heavyweight, and had a pretty good run there, becoming champion, and moving back up. But it just feels like Stipe has done it the old-fashioned way. He's worked for everything he's got. Where DC, I'm not to take anything away from the man, because he's still winning when he gets in the octagon, but it seems like he's had a little bit of help, a little bit of push. Like the UFC wants DC to walk away with the belt. So back to the topic of the video. What happens after Saturday night? Does DC really retire? Or has this just all been a ruse to uh, get yet another title fight? Is DC interested in a trilogy fight with John Jones? I've heard people talk about that. Does he deserve that opportunity? Because he didn't win even one of those. Does Stipe retire after the fight? We've heard that rumor. The heavyweight belt has just been tied up between these two for nearly two and a half years. And other contenders are present and worthy. In fact, one particular contender comes to mind. So can we all agree that Francis Ngannou is the next number one contender? Personally, I think he's the current number one contender, but can we at least all agree that he's the next one? Assuming that we can, then we have to assume that if Stipe wins, then we're going to see Stipe versus Ngannou for the belt, right? Or what if DC wins and he retires? Then we're going to see Stipe versus Ngannou for the belt, right? Kind of goes back to that first question of why is this fight even happening? What if win, lose, or draw, Stipe and DC both retire? 
Well, who's Ngannou going to fight there, Fight next? Now, I do think there's a lot of contenders, but if you really look at the list, I think you really see why Ngannou's a number one contender, but everybody deserves their shot. So let's take a look at the rest of the heavyweight division and who might be in line next. First, we have the number three ranked heavyweight contender, Curtis Blades. Now, Curtis only has two losses in his 12 UFC fights. Any guess who those two losses came to? That's right, Francis. One of them, though, was four and a half years ago, so I'm not really going to hold that against him. In fact, in my list of contenders here, I'm really only going to go back three years because fighters evolved so rapidly that I, I had a hard time holding fights against him that happened so long ago. So in those past three years, uh, Curtis has, is 7-1. and one. He's beaten many ranked opponents like Alexander Volkov, uh, Junior Dos Santos, Alistair Overham, uh, Olenek. Uh, he probably has the best claim to be behind Ngannou, but there's several others who have a decent claim as well. Next up is the number four ranked heavyweight contender, Derek Lewis. Now, Lewis has beaten Ngannou before. That's saying something. Uh, he's also beaten a few ranked opponents over these past three, past couple of years. Just, you know, last weekend, Alexei Olenek. He's beaten Alexander Volkov. He's 6-2 and two over those past uh, three years. But he's also been beaten by a couple of ranked opponents in uh, BC and Junior Dos Santos. And, uh, yeah, he might have the best argument. I still think I'd give it to Curtis. But Derek Lewis has a good argument as well. The number five and number six ranked contenders are fighting each other this weekend. Jarzinho Rosenstreich takes on Junior Dos Santos on this card. Jarzinho is 4-1 in the UFC. And uh, he's really only been here since... Uh, for not even two years yet. Now he's beaten he's beaten Alistair over him, who was obviously a ranked opponent. Uh, but he did lose to Nganu, and he lost pretty quickly. But what if he gets an impressive win this weekend, which I feel is very likely? That may very well put him in that list as well. Now, Junior, he, of course, is the other part of that fight. Uh, Junior is 3-2 and two in the UFC over the past three years. And he has beaten Derek Lewis. Uh, he lost to Curtis Blades. He also lost to Ngannou. He's on a two-fight losing streak, so I don't see his claim being real strong right now. But again, what if he gets an impressive win this weekend? I don't see that happening, but what if he does? Does he put himself right back there in that contender's list too? Alistair Overham and Augusta Sakai are ranked 7 and 9 respectively, and they're fighting each other next month. Again, this is going to be one to pay attention to. Alistair is 3-3 three and three in the UFC over the last three years, and he's lost to Jarzinho and Curtis Blades. He also lost to Ngannou. We see a bit of a trend here with Ngannou, don't we? But he's got that fight in September. Again, if he can get that impressive victory, he's right back in the conversation. On the other side of the octagon, Augusta Sakai, he's 4-0 in the UFC, and he hasn't been here very long, less than two years. Uh, he hasn't beaten any ranked opponents quite yet, but he definitely gets one in September. Does an impressive win put him in that division? Put him in that in that argument? Now he isn't. He has not been beaten by Francis yet. He has not fought him yet. So maybe a little bit of new blood in there would be a good thing. Going down the list of contenders a bit, we've got Shamil Abdurikhimov taking on Cyril Gain, number twelve and fifteen. They're also fighting in September. Shamil, he's 3-1 and one in the last three years. He's not been as active as the rest of the people on this uh, list. And he's also uh, lost to some contenders like Curtis Blades, and he's not beaten a ranked opponent yet. But he does fight in September against the up-and-comer Cyril Gain, so possibly an impressive victory there pushes him into the conversation. Cyril, on the other hand, is, is undefeated, period. He's 3-0 and in the UFC, 
He's pretty new. He's only been here for a year. He also has not fought a rank opponent. He has not fought in Ghana. But I think that if he can go in there and take care of Shamil, he can really stake a claim in this division as the only undefeated fighter and possibly get his shot. Now, kind of as a bonus here, he's not listed as a contender, but we do kind of expect to see him back in the octagon soon, is Anthony Rumble Johnson. Now, Anthony has talked about not wanting to fight Ngannou in his comeback fight, but it's very likely he comes back, takes on one of these uh, ranked guys that I didn't mention, and gets an impressive victory and gets right into that conversation as well. So we've got a whole list of guys who are currently contenders or very well may be very soon. As mentioned a few times, this belt's been tied up so long, but our contenders have gotten old. The heavyweight division is an old man's division. It's always kind of been so, but never more so than right now. Here is a list of the top 15 contenders as well as the Champ and Rumble Johnson, and their ages. As you can see, we only have three contenders on the right side of 30. We have four contenders who are beyond 40, and a handful more who are knocking on 40's door. We've been waiting too long. The belt's been tied up for too long. Something's got to happen now, and luckily it's about to. A lot of these contenders are knocking on retirement's door, and it's time they get the push they deserve. As we've seen, a lot of these contenders already have a fight scheduled very soon. The UFC seems to be gearing up for this new heavyweight division. The other guys who I haven't mentioned who don't have fights scheduled, I say, let's just put them all on one card. Let these contenders fight up-and-comers, and one of two things will happen. Either the contenders will pad their stats and create their own argument, or the up-and-comers are going to prove worthy and will get a new influx of new blood into this contender's list. With the belt being more or less tied up for the past two and a half years, the doors are about to open and it should be a very good time to be a heavyweight. Unless, of course, we're about to see the beginning of a new era. The era of King Ngannou. So let's look forward to the fights we have this weekend at UFC 252. Should be a good card top to bottom. Let's also look forward to this new heavyweight division that we're going to see over the next year or two. I'm sure we're going to do a lot of talking about it. Until next time. Oops.